Oh my goodness, can you believe it? Say hi to these gorgeous ladies. Ah, you can see them. Kira, how are you? I'm in the wilderness, like you said. I love it. Sandy, looking all professional there. I love all the changes going on. We're different, right? And I'm, I'm in that zone. I'm in the professional zone today. That's and what I'm doing. My, I, look, yes. I look, my scarf is like coming apart. I feel like, okay, I should have fixed it and tucked it under. All right, listen, ladies, here we go. This is a big treat for everyone. Let's keep it real is keeping it real. And they're seeing you. How awesome. They're seeing you. And there's two amazing women. And I want everyone to know this is recorded, but I'm putting this out quickly because I just love the two of you. I love Thank what you're you. doing. I love everything you're doing in the world. It's Aww. crazy. It's fun. It's informative, but we'll get into that before we do. We're going to do something. You ready for this? I've never <laughs> done it before. You're going to love it. You ready? So here we go. The two of you have to close your eyes. I like well, that. I like that. Yeah. Okay. So close there. I can see you, Kira, so you have to close All your right, eyes. Right. Oh, I'm there. And it's everybody right. watching it, unless you're driving, I want to do this with you. All right. Anybody who's oh. not driving, I want you to relax. Roll it's your so shoulders. Oh, I love this. Oh my God. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Don't wow. think about it. Just move around. Oh, I love then it. Put your feet wherever they are, flat on the floor hands down, and this is what I want you to do. There's three things that your body is the essence of. It's mm -hmm. what we're all made of. When we really are in our flow, every single person at their essence is peace, love, and joy. Mm -hmm. We have to struggle to think about things in the fear zone. So before we start this podcast, I'm gonna ask both of you and everyone watching and listening, to get in a chill vibe mood, mm. relax your shoulders. And here we go. I want you to take a deep breath in and bring all the love there is in the universe. God, your inner voice into you. Take a deep breath in and breathe all the love that's out for you unconditionally, no matter what you do in. And then take a deep breath out and send that love to everyone. Now, I want you to go to the next one. I want you to go to peace. And I want you to feel all the peace there is in the world. There is peace. And take that peace and bring it into and embody it in your life. Take a deep breath in and then exhale and feel that peace go to all your friends and family and community and out to the world. It like trickles out. And now we're going to do the third thing, which is joy your third essence that you embody and you can tap into this whenever you want. Take a deep breath in and feel all the joy there is for you in the world. There's so much joy coming at you. Take a deep breath in and breathe it out to everyone. Now, before you open your eyes today, for the two lovely ladies, I want them to think what they want to embody on the show. But anybody watching, how do you want to show up in the world? Pick one word. Do you want to show up with passion? Do you want to show up fun? Do you want to show up with power, peace, joy, calm? What's the one word that you want to embody today? You can always change it up. Take another deep breath in and open your eyes. Okay, let's that. We're ready. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. What a beginning. That was amazing. I think, I, I think we should start our sessions like that. I mean, honestly, that was amazing. Love that. I do that with a lot of my Love clients that. and I can feel the anxiousness in them. But yeah. we could get into a lot of things before we do. I have to read your bios because I love them. <laughs> Number one, oh, I love the way that, by the way, they, they numbered them, which is great. About Cindy That was me. I think that was me. Number one. Sandy is a 60-year-old woman married to her best friend, Jeff, for 32 years. She knows him since she's 21. That's a whole nother podcast. It's a long time. Number two. <laughs> he has three amazing sons, which I know some of them, and they are amazing, that she loves spending time with. Actually, that's how Sandy and I met. We did. That's right. Next That's gen right. event. That's Ooh, correct. She, she. 
Sandy, number three, <laughs> clinical social worker. I've never had this. I love first. Who is something she has always wanted to do. Her latest project, um, ma'am, which I've been on as hell, is a podcast she's co-hosting with Kira, her colleague, Yay. for women in midlife who are mad that society, naughty, naughty society, sees them as absolute and irrelevant. She's on a absolute, absolute. What I say, absolute, absolute. You switch. Absolutely, absolute. Oh my goodness, Hoochie Mama, absolute. And you're absolute. That would be a good thing. And irreverent. She's on a mission to prove otherwise. Yay, Sandy! All right, before we move on, you ready? Ready. What's the word for the past thirty days Mm -hmm. that you would say? has been your life. I don't care if it's good, bad, ugly, but if you were going to pass, you know, say, Hey, Sandy, I'm going to describe my past 30 days. What would be the word that best describes it? And don't sugarcoat it, whatever it is. And why? Fun. For the last 30 days, I've been having fun for a change. Yeah. yeah. Tell yeah. us everything. Well, I've mentioned it on the podcast a lot that we, uh, Jeff and I, my husband, we, um, belong to a boat club and uh this was a new thing for us is boating this summer and it's been just a wonderful wonderful experience and it's been fun and relaxing and you know i i yeah i'm sorry to see it end because the season is coming to yeah. a close unfortunately yeah. but it's been just great and fun and different and that describes pretty much my 30 days it's just been like quite great wait a minute wait a minute did you rent a boat or am I just making that up? Rent. Well, it's a, bo- it's a boat club where, you know, we don't own a boat. So you get to go and actually, you know, if, if there's availability, you get to go on a boat, you know, and ah. it's, but it's, we, we're not boaters. I mean, this is like a whole new concept for us, you know, so to learn how to boat, I'm going to learn eventually how to, that should be a podcast in itself, how to navigate the boat. Um, but it's just opened up a whole like lifestyle for us that we've never had before and you know we've gotten closer now we are best friends I actually I thought you were going to ask me Kira if we're really best friends she was flowing you didn't have a chance you were in your flow no 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 I I I expected you to I was happy for it I didn't feel there was a yeah Sandy I felt I mean Jeff's not always your best friend no sometimes he's not but he but he he is uh you know, he, we just really enjoyed each other this summer. And um, I mean, look, we're, you know, I'm in a long-term marriage. That's a whole other podcast. Like that comes with challenges. It's not always so easy, you know, but I can say these 30 days have been fun and I'll cherish them. And I look yeah. forward to continuing, you know, in that venture. Yeah. But that's my and, answer. And uh, Kira, I love that you said that because when it comes to mine, it's like when somebody said to me, oh, you and Eric get along so well, I go, what minute did you see us? You know what right. I mean? Like, where right. were we? Where, you know what I mean? Did you watch me when I was like, what were you thinking, blockhead? Or were you watching me when I hopped up? You know? Right. Any given moment, you know, not even any given day. Well, you know, so there's that. All right, Kira, I want to make sure I say your last name right. Sposato? Yes. Yes. Oh, God. All right. Shh. Let's talk about number one. You do not know how I was reading this and cracking my butt off. I love it. Number one, <laughs> behind door number one. It's been a while. Kira is a divorced 58 year old. It's not been a while. You're still 58? <laughs> yeah, I'm still 58. Thank you. All right. See, psychiatric nurse practitioner who's independent, self sufficient, and a risk taker. Kira is a career woman with a successful private practice, which has enabled her to live life on her terms without being, I think there's a, there, there's a theme here, <laughs> dependent on a man. <laughs> Number three, she and Sandy, we're, we're going to have to have, you can call me Joy or something so we know who we're talking no, to. No, I know. I have to be careful because, yes. Yeah, you can call me Weston. Yeah, you're joy. joy. Abundance yeah. and Joy. Yeah. See, she and Sandy created um, Man as Hell. I just can't, I have to do that when I say it. To inspire <laughs> women in life who are feeling stuck and obsolete to shake things up and become 
the woman they've always wanted to be. Okay, so what's your word and why? I wanted to sugarcoat it, honestly, and say exciting because this is such a high energy podcast and I really love it and the bells are, the chimes are ringing. Ah. But I'm, I mean, I don't want to be a downer. I'm a little sad because I'm downsizing in my life and I'm in a transition. So I am adjusting to a transition in life, selling a home that I love, you know, so I'm a little bit dazed by everything, like my yeah. new life. Um, so yeah, I'm adjusting. I think the word is adjusting. You know what? I want to come and kiss your little cheeks for being truth because it, like we talked about, right. you know, life is like this. I don't care how happy you are. I mean, if someone expects me to be joyful all the time, I just want to smack them because that's not life, you know? And if you right. keep wanting both men, fun, Pat, maybe if that's really where you are, but next month, maybe it will be something right. else, you know? So right. thank you for sharing it while you're in the thick of it. But I need to find out a little bit more. When you say you're downsizing, what is what do you mean by that? Like <clears throat> a home, a real home, a large home that I love, that I was very proud of purchasing by myself in 2006 on a little island off of Long Island here, Morgan Island. And I, that was, I felt when I peaked because on my own, I bought a very expensive home in a nice area, again, without a man. And I've kept it up all these years, but then I bought another home out here in the woods. Well, it's on the on Long Island Sound. So I've been taking care of both homes for nine years uh -huh. and managing, and it's not been a problem. And then I bought a little condo in Florida, which is a rental, but now I own three homes. And who am I? I am not Jennifer Lopez. And you know, it's <laughs> so I decided to sell the main home because it's the biggest and has the most problems with it. And, you know, and now I really feel, you know, I have this little place out east, but I don't really have a home home. So I'm transitioning to something that I've already, I already have. It's not like this exciting new step that everyone yeah. thinks it should be. It's sort of saying, you know, this is too much for me at 58. Meanwhile, I managed it for nine years. Okay. I'm a little like disappointed that it's too much, but it is. And, you know, that's what yeah. it is. I have to give up a, a home. These are more like summer and winter places and not home. Yeah, I, I understand. So I keep saying to everybody, even though I have a couple of homes that I'm homeless, I have no pity for me, you know, because I have all these yes, yeah, none. Right. But, but I, I do get it. I do get right, it. Right. Yeah. And can I just put yeah. my little twist on it? Do you mind? Because you're making me think of all these things. But and I have so many more questions. We have to keep it both in. Like I could do a three-hour podcast with each of you because you're so incredible and real. Let's keep it real. Yeah. I so understand that I'd be, you know, it's sad, you know, and you, you got to go through that. But my brain in my head for you goes immediately to how exciting, you know, not as much to do. She's, she's not that. I don't look at it like you can't do it anymore. I look at it like you decided you don't want to do it anymore. Like, why the F am I keeping up this big house? I'm going to enjoy more life, have less responsibilities. That's where my brain goes. No, and you know, yeah. somebody term said actually use the word resizing here and not downsizing. You're mm. yeah. yeah. That was very helpful because yeah. yes, I am resizing, like you said, to fit yeah. these puzzle pieces together yeah yes but like, while you're in the thick of it I would be my home means a lot to me like I'm already like got tears up and it's not even my home but, you know I it's like too because you put so much into it like I really yeah. decorate I had a decorator I never yeah. had a decorator you know who did yeah. everything, custom everything and yeah and I'm leaving it and and the memories. Wait, some guy of all things some late mm. 30s single man is buying my home that I've made so feminine over the years. No. I'm like, what no. are you gonna do to my home? No. You know? No, I couldn't watch. I couldn't watch. And I so mm -hmm. to me, I understand that because my home means a lot. Every little picture, every little thing. Okay. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Like, I get it. So we are there for you because no matter what, I don't care if you have five other homes, this is the home you build, the right. manager you build. And while you're in it, you're going to need as much support as possible from your community, your posse, your friends to get yes. through. Because no one's going to say it's easy. I don't care if you have a $10 million mansion anymore. Right. It's different. Right. So thank you for sharing that. Well, thank you for being supportive. Yeah. Yeah. Because I'm going to sit here and cry with you. Do you want me to come over and hug you? We'll cry together and we'll go through your house yeah. and we can point out all the memories. No, I'm actually, no, I'm not. I mean, I'm adjusting. So I, I don't want to use that. I'm adjusting. That's different. Yeah. All right, Sandy, we're yeah. going to go back and forth with some of the tips that we're going to get in. We're going to get in some of them, but then we're going to see where it flows. So I want to hit this up right away because this is something that when I always ask my listeners and my viewers to send me questions for you before you come on. Okay. And it all had the same thing. And it was around this big thing that you say about, Sandy says, get comfortable with saying no to the demands of other people so you can finally put yourself first. Now, the questions that came into it is, I know I should, but then I look at the person and before I know, I go, okay, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, it's not easy for sure. It's oh. not easy, but it's so liberating. Oh my God, it is so liberating. And having been a pleaser pretty much all my life, which we, you know, we've discussed over and over again. Um, like the first time you say no, you, you you feel like you know you're having an out of body experience. Like, did that just come out of me? Like, did I just say no? But then, like, all of a sudden, you freed up yourself to have other possibilities. Like, you know, when, when you're always saying yes to people and to you know, uh, obligations. And there's always, you know, people who are asking something of you, particularly if you're a yes person, you know, like if I was or a pleaser, I should say, as yeah. I was. Yeah, um, yeah. You, then, then you look at your calendar and you you resent it. Like you resent that you, you have these things in your calendar, these lunch plans or these dinner plans or these obligations of other obligations. And like, like, why did I do this? And I think that, you know, with age, with maturity, I've learned to, really understand that by saying yes to somebody, I'm saying no to myself. So I've kind of flipped that. And now mm -hmm. I say, I mean, sometimes it's not like a flat out no. Sometimes it's, I'll have to get back to you. The likelihood is no, but you know, right now I can't commit or, but I'm, I'm not saying yes immediately. And that really took a long time to get yeah. comfortable with. It's still not great, but it's really refreshing for my, yeah. for my life. It's been a change, a change, a game changer for me, honestly. Yeah, you you said that on we just did a few weeks ago, coincidentally, yeah. Yeah. my live show, Hey, I got something to say. And yeah. I got a big response from that from people behind the scenes. And even me, that that's been my sticky wicked. And I'm in school now and there's a lot of things I can't do. So I'm, I'm saying no. And I really I thought about what you said. I'm like, no, I really can't because I really want to do well in this course. And guess what? I got a lot of pushback. You will. I mean, some of my close friends are like, well, I know you're really busy, but, but are you going to do it just forget us? And then I was like, what? I've been there for every freaking thing. You, I, this means a lot to me. Then I had my other friends are like, we'll be here. But yeah. I didn't expect it from some of them. Yeah, I think that because they, they had this expectation that you're going to say yes, because that's who you've been and that's what they need from you, you know? Yeah. But I think eventually people will respect it. Like if you're, you're not doing this intentionally to hurt anybody, you're doing this because you have X amount of energy and time in yeah. your life. Yeah. So this yeah. is about really what, what works best for you, Sandy. And if you're not Sandy Joy, and if you don't start to put up those kinds of like boundaries for yourself, then you will disappoint yourself in order to please someone else. And what is yeah. that about? Yeah, I mean, I have to tell you, I felt good, even though some of them were disappointed. Yeah, I said, don't take this personally. I mean, I only right. have so many hours and this, you should be happy for me. But I was shocked. But I also yeah. didn't feel like, boo. I was like, yay me, I felt good doing it. You yay know? you is right. And the moon comes out that night and the sun comes out the next day. Life yeah. goes on. Right. Like, so they might have a, like, you know, like resting bitch face for a minute, but you know what, it, it, they, they, they end up loving you and it go, it moves on, you yeah. know, and it's with family and as well, like you have to, you have to look at what's right for you. Yeah. 
especially Sarah, now. How are you with this, with the no thing? You know, I've had a lot of practice um, because I didn't have children, so I didn't have as many commitments and I chose not to remarry. So I've been okay with saying no because I live life on my terms. So actually it's not been a struggle, maybe occasionally, yeah. but yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm okay at saying no. Yeah, I saw, cause I was reading your bio and I thought, I bet she's really good at this. Yes, she's but good. it comes off as selfish. It does when you say no. Like it to does? The parties when I was younger with all the little kids, I don't have kids. I really did not want to go to the soccer games or the birthday parties. You know, so people were very upset but they understood like I did not belong there. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I couldn't even relate to the moms. So yeah. it took a while, but no, I'm okay with it. Good for you. I know, right? <laughs> Good it's for honest. you. Like, it's, it's honest. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. 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 And I love the fact that you were okay, that they were mad at you and you still did it. That to me is the great part. Yeah. Well, they were, yes. I mean, their family and the closest friends, the ones that weren't the closest, I think knew she's not going to call. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. But these were people who loved me to begin with. So yes, were they disappointed? My parents, were they upset? Yes. But, you know, I had my own relationship with my parents. That was good. I didn't need to show up at all these kid parties with them. <sighs> That's really tough for the people pleaser in me, but man, prop. Yeah. It's, I mean, people would say it's selfish, and I've had that. Yes, I get it. Yes. The Fountainhead has shaped my life. And, um, uh, and oh, no, I forgot her name. Um, but The Fountainhead, that book, I read it when I was 19. It's about putting yourself first. And yeah, I, I read it so many years ago. I really can't remember that much, but the name. Ayn Rand. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. So yeah, that inspired me, I guess. Okay, we're going to stay with you, Kira. Boy. Because <laughs> I like this one. This is what I'm okay with. This is what, I'm, this is what I got down a little bit. Just say yes to any opportunity that comes your way. Tell us more. I have, this is why I don't have children either. It would have been very selfish of me to say yes to everything and leave my poor kids behind. Point. From a very young age, uh, you know, I'm a risk taker. I was probably when I was a little girl, I was a very tough kid to babysit. I always did my own thing. And he, as a teenager and as an adult, yeah, if someone says, Kira, do you want to try this? I will always say yes. Maybe not bungee jumping. Thank God no one's ever asked me. Yeah, yeah. But to any opportunity to experience something new, I will say mm. yes. I want to, and you know, that means emotional too. Like I'm happy about the really difficult periods in my life too, because I can relate to my patients when they talk about their mm. difficult periods. So I'm even happy that I've had them. And my goal is really on my deathbed to look back and say, yeah, I did it all. I did. A, I mean, I've done, I've done so much now. Like if I were to die tomorrow, I would be okay with it because I've done almost everything mm. you can imagine doing. How many freaking people can say that? I can't. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I mean, everything from scuba diving to jumping out of planes. I raced go-karts in Canada, like everything high energy, high speed, ATVs. I mean, I just think anything people say, like just, yeah, I've said yes. So, and I'm happy about that. And I'll say, I still say yes. My boyfriend was thinking of going, I guess it's called air gliding on, it's just glide. There's somebody that glides past us back and forth. Yeah. A sail on a little engine in a little seat, this old man, and he goes past <laughs> us where we live. And he said, do you want to try something like that? And I said, yes, I will try that. I will sit on that little seat with my little engine and just <laughs> fly around the sound here. And I'm, we're looking into where we can do that. So Fantastic. Yes, to that. You know, I'm cracking up because as much as you two are like, you know, no wonder you get along so well. You're so opposites, opposite, opposite. And you bring out the other part of each other. So Sandy, yeah. how are you? 
by the way, I do oh. like the no and the yes together because I want them to understand saying no is to, you don't have to commit to everything and saying yes to experience life is totally different. So how are you with that? No, I'm so opposite. I'm such a nervous Nelly. Forget it. You tell me to do gliding over the, the sound. I'll tell you to take a walk. I'm not, that's not my thing. No, I'm not a risk taker. I'm really conservative. You don't swim. I'm doing it. I don't swim. Because right. I'd rather land in the water than land on the ground. And right. I do it, you know, a jet skier very fast too. So I would rather hit water than hit concrete. Yeah. But you don't swim. I don't know how to swim, but that's on my list. I have to really learn how to swim. And I think I have to like revise this whole bucket list thing. Like, yeah. you know, somebody said something about like, why should it be called a bucket list? Shouldn't it just be called a list of things you want to do? Bucket list makes it sound so like. But I hate, I hate, I don't like that word. I don't, I don't like it either. I I'm not saying it. No. The bucket, kick the bucket. Kick the bucket. Kick the bucket. Actually, a movie with Morgan Freeman from yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't want to yeah. kick any buckets. I just a list. I just a list of things like you know that that I think would be interesting. And I don't swim. You know, I I I tried it. It didn't really work for me. Um, but I know I'm not a risk taker. I'm just did leave me almost, alone. Did you almost drown when you say you didn't? Work yes, I did almost drown. Uh, I try. I actually almost drowned myself as a kid, and then I jumped in to save my son. When he was drowning, I jumped in a pool to save him, not even realizing that how deep the water was. Water was that's like a motherly instinct. I jumped right in. Uh, I could have, I could have, could have been terrible, but it turns out it wasn't. But yeah, I need to, I need to do that. Like I, there's so many things I want to do, you know. But it's just having, making the time, having the time. But what I'm thinking about is really not jumping out of planes and you know skiing yeah, yeah and, i got you yeah. yeah 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 no that's not me maybe gardening no i'm just i'm i'm kind of let low risk taking yes yeah, especially at this stage about, sandy and i talked about what did we want to do sandy wanted to get her eyebrows done or her eyes yes. or something and i want eyebrows to too a large yeah that's too i know we're yeah. so different just, i know we I yeah that too i want to get a little uh dragonfly because it means transformation i have no tattoos i don't either i don't either but I wouldn't I even think about it. Like I think we should. I was just going. No. Hey, let's all get maybe a tiny tattoo. Yeah, just Jeff, a tiny would, tattoo. Jeff would love it. He Jeff is very very much like in love with tattoos, like little ones, little yeah. butterfly. Yeah. Little, yeah. Nope, I'm not doing that. Because of the pain, are you afraid of the pain? No, I think it's like a Jewish thing. I think it's like a traditional <laughs> thing. You don't do tattoos on your body. You can't get uh, buried in a Jewish way. I think that's really like a like a cultural thing or something. I don't know. That's funny. Now I have to check with my Jewish friends if they have tattoos or not. Will you let me know? Check check this out because that's kind of like what's stopping. That's a pain. I had three children, natural childbirth. I could take that pain. Yeah. But I think it's the whole idea of the burial, like that. It's like you can't do anything to your body. Like, oh. I think so. I heard that. I should check with the rabbis. <laughs> right. Don't desecrate your body. Yeah. Exactly. I could. I mean, I definitely could check that out. But yeah. what if that belief you found out wasn't to do it? Would you do it? I would consider it. Yeah, I would consider it. But I, I do think it's always stuck with me all these years because Jeff really likes it. Like he's always been. Ben love get, it. He I know. It. He thinks it's hot to get like a little tiny something, yeah. you know? Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that that's whole, has been holding me back. That whole idea of yeah. the body, not, not you know, creating... Yeah. Changing the body. You know what? <laughs> She's such a good girl. Sandy. I'm a good girl. She's such a good girl. I'm a good girl. Yeah. I'm Please a... want to try to shake her up a little myself, you know, because she's so good. I'm good. I am good. Whose I... who's thing was stop being a good girl? Because I knew which one was Kira's and Sandy, but then I have these ones like number five, stop being a good girl. I think that was mine, maybe. Yeah. Sandy, you said it too. You're yeah, I've said it. You know, I think, you know, you get these like notions, like these, these mantras, you have to be the good girl. We're conditioned like in a way yeah. to be the good girl. What does that even mean? I don't know. But this, but my personality is such that I'm a rule follower. I do what I generally don't like to like, you know, upset the apple cart. Like that's yeah. sort yeah. of me. Right. Um, but this whole, this whole thing is shaking things up, Sandy, coming on your podcast, Sandy Joy. For us, I mean, I speak for Kira too. 
that's right. like this is crazy like yeah. Kira, yeah. like you know coming i mean coming on honestly like you're a celebrity like to come on you know and I, even us all, having yes for you to right I, funny thing is here we are talking about our lives sharing with you i was not even on social media anything facebook or instagram because i didn't want right. anyone to know about my life and here i am talking to you we have a podcast where i share it's such a strange thing. It's weird. Right? Yes. And I'm telling you, I'm putting you on a huge network starting next week. Oh my God. Congrats oh my God. On that but anyhow, listen, can I, you, I have so, I'm so sad. This is only an hour. Ladies, we're going to have to bring you back because people are going to love this crap. Bring us back. Bring us back. Yeah, right, I feel listen. like I'm like, yeah. I, and I found it. So I was doing this workshop and in it, the guy was amazing, amazing, amazing. My mentor, I love him, Death Matthew. And he changed things up and said, forget the bucket list. We're going to go creative zone. There is no right. There is no wrong. I want you to think of each category in your life, whether it's relationships, experiences, travel time, and you have to write scribble, scrabble, a minimum of a hundred things that you want to do. Oh. If nothing's too little nothing's too big and it doesn't have to be reality. It could be you want to sleep with three men at the same time. You, you may not do that. You know, I, I want to have the body, you know, of a 25 year old. I want to, and some, but you were just supposed to go free falling. Well, I did it. Wow. And man, the stuff that I saw that I really want to do. Yeah. There's some that are completely bizarre and I don't think my husband would go for it, but there's others that are really like, why haven't I gotten my eyebrows shaped? You know what I mean? Why haven't I got a massage in two years? You know My eyebrows I mean? are beautiful, by the way. I it, know. Shape. They look great. They do you look know what great. I'm saying? Yes, yes. Why and not? It, it's just, it was a, and I love that exercise. Just kept writing and kept writing. And then we defined it and then we defined it. And then we came with the top 10. And then we went down and we down in each month. Like, hey, what's the one thing you want to accomplish right now? And I did so many more things. And I am a risk taker, but I did so many more things. I was like, why didn't I do that? And it felt different to me because I think I, I hated the word bucket list. These are things, these are dreams. These are joys. These are things I want to do, you know? Yeah. All right. So back to Kira. This is a big one. This is huge. This oh, is God. massive. Money, 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 money. Did I write that? <laughs> do we want that? We were talking about in here that you wanted to add in about not being dependent on a man for money. Do you remember that? Yes, that's a big deal for me. It's a huge deal for everyone. And so the reason I'm asking it is because a lot of my young ladies said, now I say young, they're in their 30s and they already feel like they're in relationships. It makes me sad that they're scared to get out of because they couldn't afford to get out. Oh, yeah. And so they said, please ask. And some of them, I, my heart just goes out to them because some are married, some aren't. One of these young ladies I know well, and she's got three kids. Now she said, I'm not miserable. <laughs> he doesn't beat me and he doesn't <laughs> swear at me, but I'm just not feeling, as she says, lovey dovey. Mm. There you go, Kira. Help is on its way. So uh, she's in a tough bind again, because she does have three children, but I would recommend even with three children, people do go back to school part time at night. I don't know if she's ever gone to college, if she has a college degree, but if she doesn't, I would advise maybe she go back to school. I went back to school in my thirties and I got this degree as a nurse practitioner, but I didn't have children, but and if she was in the career field, maybe she should go back part-time. And you start, what I tell my patients, they start putting away money. And it's money they can use for themselves. They, do, they don't have to explain to their husbands. I mean, mm -hmm. what is she saying? Does she want to do things without him? Is she saying she'd like to leave the relationship? She wants to leave. Oh, she, she wants to leave. leave. And she feels trapped. Now, by the way, the reason I'm saying I'm pointing out one, I got a whole mess here because I put out some of your questions and see, and the big ones were trouble saying no. And the other big one 
that came up, I'll, we'll get into that later, but the second big one, so the first one was trouble saying no. And the other big one is they're in relationships. Even this, um, it's a man, but the woman makes the money and he wouldn't be able to have the lifestyle he has. Mm. I know this is where you really have to weigh what's more important to you. You really do. Is freedom more important to you than luxury? For me, yes. Because I could have had a much more luxurious life had I married some of these men that I'd been with that were. Yeah. And you know, men that are wealthy, I feel, I believe, are much more controlling and mm. demanding. And if they don't get what they want, they can easily go outside the relationship, which I have wealthy patients. Mm -hmm. Mm. So for me, my freedom, and you really need to think about it, yeah. was worth everything. And, you know, they, it's some soul searching here. Yeah. What's important to you, really? And it's yeah. just between those two. And again, for that poor girl, I have women who are trapped in their relationships. I always say if they have a parent and they can go stay with their parent who will mm. be with their children, that's always an option. And I remind them, you don't have your children. You're not going to have them seven days a week now. You're going to have them maybe a couple of days a week if you have shared custody. So you'll have more time for yourself to pursue what you want. Is it great for kids to get divorced? No, it's really rough for kids. But again, it's a choice. You need to make a choice. What's important to you? The whole family dynamic where you're miserable or being potentially happier, still having a family that's a bit fractured. Yeah. It's really personal choice. And I believe it or not, I'm thinking about all these questions that came in about that. And your story at the beginning really highlighted the way you live your life and how you said you're making the choice and you could have done this, but still in all the upside for you is freedom and you love it. For me, but there are a lot of women who love the whole family dynamic. Like Sandy, she loves being a mom. She loves having children. I stay true to myself. I knew I wouldn't like it because I am a risk taker. God forbid, you know, I'm a motorcyclist too. I ride, I used to ride a lot all over the country. You know, I would not do that to my children and potentially yeah. die on a motorcycle. I think that would have been selfish. Yeah. I choose, chose to be less selfish with my potential family and just more selfish about me. So, mm. But again, the people who already have had children, that's tough. Yeah, that is tougher. But for the younger women who are thinking, should I have children or not have children? I'm the one saying, you know, life is really full for me, at least, and for a lot of people who don't have children. Yeah, I've never been as stressed as my friends. I just haven't. And also not and choosing not to remarry. So I've never had an answer to anybody. I've had I have a close relationship now. My boyfriend actually lives next door, but I won't <gasps> with him. He bought a house next door because I refused to live with him. That's hysterical. I they're cottages. We don't have mansions out here. It's just, you know, I have a beach. I know, I know. He bought a beach cottage he's going to renovate and build a, a real home out of. But yeah, I, re I would refuse. I cannot stand it. <laughs> like doing my Well, thing. I love, and I love the fact that two of you are so different, but I, I do want to get to see any, but I, this question goes right into this. This young lady... She is married for seven years. They both don't want to have kids. Please ask Kara how I can get my parents off my back. It's just not right for me. You know, I think my parents died still thinking. They died when I was 40, probably hoping a little oh. bit that I would have kids. But, you know, they knew me. Again, I haven't really changed. I was adventurous in my teens. Actually, I was thrown out of my house in my teens because I just kind of did my thing and they were very strict. I just kept telling them I can't do it. They were very upset when I got divorced. They're very traditional Russian parents. I didn't even tell them for a year. My ex-husband Frank and I showed up to every family gathering. Yeah. Because I couldn't tell them because they loved him. You know, I just stayed true to myself and they still yeah. love me. They're yeah. my parents, you know, where they disappointed my sister had three kids. They got their grandchildren. You know, so, so, and you know what, toward the end of their lives, they loved my stories. I think they loved my stories because I always had an adventure. I would go into my parents' house, visit them, and I'd have two sets of photographs. Back then we took photos. It wasn't, you know, camera. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know. 
would bring two sets in and I would tell them what I was up to and give each mm. one a photo and tell them what's going on, where I am, what I'm doing. And they loved it. And after they died, the neighbors told me that they would go over to the neighbor's house on our street and share with them what I was up to. So they were happy, yeah. I think, yeah. with what I was doing, even though I guess they would have liked to die knowing I'm settled. But, you know. Yeah, you know what? There was a quote, and, I, and I'm thinking of this, that, you know, don't fret who you're not and celebrate who you are. And you two ladies embody that because this is so amazing. And I'm so happy for you and your show because you have totally different lifestyles, but you're being and celebrating true to who you are versus trying to conform. And as much as you're saying like, okay, so you're not a risk taker, but you still are living the life that you love, you know, in a totally different way. So let's go into that just a little bit, because we have to wrap up soon. I'm so sad. I love this. But tell us about being a mom with three kids and working full time. Do you ever feel like your head wants to explode? Like today, like, like right now, my head wants to explode. Kira knows that we just, t- just aired a podcast and my head. Yeah, it's a lot. It's, a, it's definitely a lot, but it's full. And I have to say, I'm trying to shift the way I think about things so that I don't feel like it's overwhelming. There's no question. It's exhausting. There's no question. But I get to do this. I get to have a podcast with Kira. It's such a blessing. I get to see, you know, like people and and, and help them. And what a blessing. And when I shift my thinking, I was just talking to my mother about that this morning. Like, you know, because she was, you know, really feeling bad for me. I have a long day. I work till late at night tonight. It's, It's full. But I get to do this. Not that I have to do this. I get to do this. So when you start to think that way, your mood changes. Like I have to really wake up and think that way, you know, and, and, and versus, Oh my God, what a long day. Oh my, I'm never going to get through it. Uh, I'm going to see her. I'm going to, uh. no, that's just going to weigh me down, you know? So yeah, it's their blessings. I'm grateful for them. I have to stay in that zone. It's work. I'm not saying I wake up this morning, every morning like this, but I have to really like pray and, and, and meditate and get myself into that. Like you got this Sandy and I do the yeah. best that I can. And that's, 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 that's no secret. That's just being me doing the best that I can. So that's my, <laughs> that's- and I like that you say, and I think it is the shift because a long time ago, I don't say the B word, by the way, I don't personally say I'm so busy. I've cut uh, out my vocabulary. I do not say it. I might say, hey, I got a lot going on right now. Uh, this is a sticky weekend. It's just my mindset, you know, well, yeah. it's been some journey, but yeah. I know that I chose the life I have. Yeah. I chose yeah. it. And yeah. yes, there's times I get overwhelmed, but I wouldn't trade it. So yeah. back to the questions, which was the third biggest question is how does Sandy do the balance of three kids, husband, successful business, and a podcast? What does she do to balance it out when she gets overwhelmed? And you just said meditate, pray. I do. I do. I have like a whole morning mantra and I really try to stay like in a grateful kind of place. But look, I'm a person like there's not, not every day you feel like, you know, like you're on top of the world. Like, you know, I can't hear a nose. I fetch to her all the time. Yeah. But I, I, I try to give myself what I need. So if I haven't had like alone time, I'll say, okay, I'm going to look at my schedule. I'm going to take some alone time. And I really put myself in my, in my, uh, on my calendar, in my calendar. And I make sure that I'm accountable for that time for myself. You know, if I feel like I need to just walk around the block, I'll take that time and walk around the block. I think being aligned with what you need when you're feeling like your cup is like full and you're like overflowing, because then you, I can't give to everybody in my life. There's yeah. a lot of people in my life that I want to give to, but if you're not giving to yourself, and I really believe that, like I'm really, really believe that when I feel like I'm depleted, I've got to figure out, okay, you need some downtime. The gym is a big deal for me. It's a non-negotiable mm. for me. That's where I like zone out and yeah. I... I just kind of, you know, that's my time, you know? Um, but yeah, like it's constantly reviewing. What do you need? What, why are you not feeling right? What do you need? You know, and, and giving yourself what you need because no one else is going to give it to us unless we do, right? Ooh, that's big. It's, but it's true. Say that again, just one more time. No Go one ahead. is going to give it to us unless we do. No one is going to give us what we need unless we do. 
who knows better than you and you what we need, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we got to be attuned to that, you know, and um, otherwise you just become, you know, resentful and like, you know, just negative and, you know, that's not the space I want to be in. I really don't. That's yeah. not going to be, yeah. that's not going to work for me. Yeah. So did you always want like, okay, I know I want a big family. I want three kids. Like, was that something you always no, wanted? No, I didn't even know what I wanted. Honestly, I didn't. I want, I didn't. I, I don't think I was one of those people who knew like, oh, she wants three. I don't no, but you know what? I'm beyond, beyond yeah. blessed. They're the, you know, I, I mean, the, the jewels of my life. And I think that, you know, when I've wanted a daughter for sure, I, I'm going to go on saying I definitely wanted a girl, you know, mm. but God, God gave me these three amazing boys. Hopefully they'll bring me girls. I'm like waiting, <laughs> you know, for that, that point. And um, I'm enjoying yeah. them. Yeah. At their, st- at this stage, at, at their stages, you know, yeah. Um, yeah. So there's, yeah, no, I didn't know anything. Yeah. All I know is I, 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 I really didn't know. Like, I wish I would have known now. Like, I wish I would have been as smart as I am now. Not that I'm so smart, but as wise then. Don't you feel like that, ladies? Like, you kind of. Sure. Like, of course. You, like, who knew? Like, there was so much to learn. You weren't supposed to know. That wasn't the chance. Yes. Right. You weren't supposed to know. Right. Right. And I think it really is a good thing. It really is. All right. Yeah. We got to almost wrap up, but Kira, I want you oh, to start. Nice. How did you two lovely ladies meet? Like how long have you been? Oh my God. Kira, so, you go. I'll, uh, just why don't you start it and I'll add. Well, Kira and I were, um, we were collaborating on a patient. We had not known that. Okay. I, you know, I, and this patient mentioned this psychiatric nurse practitioner he was working with. And I said, you know, I'm going to look her up. And I looked her up and she was this beautiful woman. She is a beautiful woman. And, you know, she had all these lovely credentials. And I said, you know, I'm going to give her a call and meet with her just for business reasons, because I like to know, you know, who my patients are working with. It's collaborative. It it really gives me a whole, a sense of working, you know, well with the patient. Uh, So I called her. Wait, let me just point out. Go ahead. Therapy. I was doing the medication. Right. Right. She was doing the medication. I was doing the therapy, but I like Uh to know who the, the prescribers are. So I could, I could really talk to them about their, the patient. And I do that. So when I called her, I think I called you, she was on vacation, like hiking some kind of mountain, I'm right? Yellowstone on a path that had bears. And yeah. she calls and I'm like, who the heck is bothering me? I just <laughs> called. <laughs> and I called her and she's like, okay, I have two minutes on a Thursday. I gave you three. Oh, three minutes on Thursday, the back 23rd. To back with patients. When I work, I work. Yeah, she does. She <laughs> has, right. I am boom, boom, boom. But wait, I got there. I said, okay, I'll take it. Okay. I ran over there and like the rest is history. We, I think you gave me more than three minutes that gave day. Me five because I had a patient schedule. She gave me five minutes. I told her who I was and we you did. know, we bonded, we fell in love. We were both like, you know, like we both get it. Sisters. Like yes. it was different and somehow was different. connected. And we yeah. felt, you know, we thought we were just going to work together in private practice. Right. And we felt, well, what else could we do together? Right. We yeah. do the sauce, like as Andy said. Because we both felt that we had more to give and that we didn't want to just be, we wanted to be giving like outside of our comfort zones. Like what yeah. else could we do? We, we both knew that. For, I, I've been a therapist for 35 years. Sandy got into it a little later, but we thought, listen, why are we thinking inside the box? We thought she would do yeah. therapy, I would do the meds. No, well, you know, yeah. we're older. What can we do? And yeah. The podcast, I don't know, it came, it's a long story how we came up with that, because that was not what we were thinking initially. We just evolved into the, I was so against the podcast. I, well, we're going to have to bring you back on, because I want to hear more about that. You, know. you guys are a who? A who? Well, so are you, Sandy Joy. Yes. I mean, you're like you're amazing. The hoot. <laughs> Speaking of ho- you're the hootiest. How's that? Who are you? The hoot maker. You're the hoot right, maker. But we, we have to wrap up because she's got a client. She's I have a patient yeah. at two. Yes. I have a half an hour for lunch and then I'm 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 in that zone. Hence the work shirt. I'm in that <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. But before we go, 
<laughs> and I'm going to start with Kira. Okay. How, cause I know I want to send them both to your podcast, but is there any other way that they can find you or anything, you, you know, that for a website or email, or is it just the mammoth house? YouTube too. Yeah. This on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook. Cool. Uh, I'm man as hell. I'm man as hell. No, no apostrophes, no punctuation, just I'm ma'am as hell. Right. And we'll There's make no... sure we put it on there, baby. Thank yeah. And, and thank, you. thank you so much for having us. Thank you oh for God. inviting us. Yes. It's been an this honor. Been a blast. I know if I was near you, we'd be hanging out all the time. I love you ladies. I just love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Please. As we wrap up here, keep Keep going big, baby. Keep going big. Think big. Make your list of all the things you still want to do. I want to know that. about it. If you get a tattoo, I'm going to look into that for you. <laughs> Kira, I'm, I'm going to talk to the rabbis. I'm going to make a note to talk to the rabbis. Rabbis yes. about the tattoo. Yes. Okay. Make, maybe right? it's like a butterfly. They won't care, you know, <laughs> or, or a dragonfly for transformation. Who knows? But my let's keep it real people. I think you're going to say these two lovely ladies kept it real. I know you're going to want to share it, like it, read it. So appreciative to you. I'm so appreciative to you, Sandy and Kara. You. And you know what I'm going to say until next time. Toodles. 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 <laughs>